Hey everybody, Asher here, back with more Kerbal Space Program, and hopefully I can bring this to you in 1080p, because I think I finally have unlocked the secret to make that happen. But we are on the Eve Dervish in all of its real-time glory, and we have some real-time missions to do here today. You'll notice that I have not done any sciencing yet, so we need to fix that in a heartbeat here. So, what do we start with? Obviously, we've made it to space. Hooray! So we need to figure out... First off, what do our, we have a few contracts available, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the resources. Let's go ahead and get our crew report. And we are just going to uh, do that in Space Near Eve. We're going to get different science from Space Near Eve to otherwise. We also have a science bay that is still doing its thing. I stopped the research while approaching, but we can re begin the research again. And then we have a, a few, first off, let's go to the map mode real quick and just double check and see our crew here. We're going to go ahead and transmit transmit the science as well. So crew report while well, in space near Eve. We're not in any of the biomes, but we are in a very elliptical orbit. I am going to need to correct my orbit here before long, but it should be, if we look at the Eve Dervish, we should be able to scroll down for the crew here. Should be able to. Okay, so Abella is our scientist. So Abella is going to be the one that's going to do all the EVA fun goodies here. So if we go ahead and open this, we should be able to get a lot of the similar science here. Now we're going to do, now this is mostly a surface station versus over here, where we have kind of the stuff on the end. It's not going to make too huge of a difference where Abella comes from or where Abella goes. Let's start at least with Abella getting to do the first spacewalk outside of Eve. Like I said, this is my first time I've ever sent live people to here, so that's pretty cool. And we're currently going up, we're at 200,000, just above... Eve's Explodium C. So we do get the EVA report from the uh, surface here. So we do know we're over water on Eve. And one of the things I really love about the cloud, cloud mod is that you can barely tell where land is right now. That's going to make landing this thing much more fun of a challenge. But let's go ahead. Because we are going at a consistent speed right now, it should not create too much danger of losing my crew member forever. Because that would make me very sad if I lost my scientist here. We should be able just to zoom in. We are going to have some issues just with frame rate, just a, just a touch. As I got to remember my buttons here, my buttons. Getting kids music in my head because that's all, it's all my house is. I think of Ron Swanson saying, "There is no sound. There is only Doctor McStuffins." It's not Doctor McStuffins, but there's always something. So, space near Eve, and we can go ahead and actually. Put that in the science bay as well, but let's go ahead and collect the data. We'll remove it because we, we'll be able to do that again in just a little bit. All right, so restore the unit. Let's observe the materials bay. Same thing here. Now, this is science that's going to be returned, and that's interesting. The material study, we can't just send it to the science bay from here. Let's go ahead and keep it as well. Probably can do it once we transfer it into one of the pods. So, let's see which experiments are getting stored so collect the data and once again it's very important that you bring at least one scientist on these missions so that they can get uh, they can reset experiments one of the fun parts about the uh, Eve or the Eve landing mission I'm going to do is that I'm not sending my one scientist down there so there is going to be a pilot that's just going to have to figure it out on its own so seismic data it can't well, actually cannot be done I guess I have to be in the atmosphere for that so that's that one sciencing opportunity missed but this is the landing station so that I'm doing science from, so I'm going to have to be very careful about what I take and what I don't take. All right, so what else? We should have a gravioli detector. We should have an air pressure monitor, which I've already done. Which means we've got most of our science on hand here, so gravity data. Keep the data, and we can go ahead and uh, take the data with us. No need to reset or anything, so that is that is one positive. Log the temperature, we'll go ahead and keep that data and just take the data with us. Don't have to reset that either. So good, we have some basic science from around Eve right away. Let's put you back in the uh, other side of the research lab any day now. Now that research lab is blocked right now. These engines are going to be jettisoned once we get in a, a descent course. And there's really only going to be one shot to make that happen. So let's go ahead and get down here. I like the dervish design. It's uh, apparently 
It makes me feel a little more vindicated seeing the Hollywood style of the Hermes from The Martian that was just announced, obviously. It's nothing like the book, and it's one of those books It's like, I started to read it, and then life got too busy, and then I just went ahead and read a plot summary, and I really wish I hadn't, but it's one of those books that's good enough. Whoop, 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 whoop. We're holding on to this because we are in space right now. We do have uh, all these things. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, we can we don't we can actually go in and store experiments so there we go decent enough now we have all these material based things again and let's look at our stored science that is currently in here review the data so we can send this to the mobile lab to process we can send this to process we're going to run out of room for data pretty soon so yeah material bay that's that's pretty valuable science not as high as some other places but let's see here, EVA report, we can go ahead and actually transmit this for science as well. And we'll keep this. Yeah, we're at 436 data, so we can send this in for data, temperature scan. That may not fit. We may get an error return in just a moment. All right, well, we do have 127 signs that we can transmit right now. But otherwise, yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff. So our first goal of the day here, we've got a few goals for this mission, for this video here. One of them is to just get into orbit, get into a stable orbit, because you'll notice we have, we have gotten one part of the contract complete, which is transmit or recover scientific data from around EVE, but that is only part of the battle. We don't have the get into orbit one yet because we are not in a stable orbit, if you notice. Our ship, we are suborbital right now. We aero captured a little too good. You can see as a, our periapsis is doing funny things, but we are passing by the planet just a little bit here. We have two hours before we get to a 70 or 69 meters. I hope that's very visible with this here, but you can see we're already up above the poles here. In fact, I may be able to do another EVA report from Necklace. Where are you, Necklace? Here you are. Is this going to be over the Explodium C2? No, it's going to be space wall high over. So let's just go ahead and do that. And then crew report. That's not manned. Crew report. Crew report while in space high over E. We can definitely process that one. Oh, not enough data storage. All right, well, we don't have to right now. So review report. Let's go ahead and transmit. And then necklace was a little further down, I believe. Or he is somewhere around here. Where are you, Necklace? Ah, EVA. EVA so I can find you. Thank you. And that didn't help. We should have some stored data around here somewhere. Not enough crew. Well, we'll figure it out. All right. The important thing is that we have science, and we're actually passing up above the top of Eve. That is how fast we're going. Still 3,000 meters per second. So our first maneuver is definitely going to be just a slight prograde hop to put us above the atmosphere. I think a periapsis of 100,000 is going to be more than plenty. I think maybe I think maybe 120 might be good just so we don't have to worry about time accelerating time acceleration issues. That's only going to be 24 delta v. Which is pretty nice. The hard part, though, for any of these ships, for any of these monstrosities, is just getting them to move. So this is where I like to time accelerate some a little bit, especially where we have the tiny docking ports. It's really nice now that we have the bigger docking ports. But with the tiny docking ports, we have the added problem of everything sways around a little bit. So we can rotate the ship. It's going to be completely asymmetrical. Let's see, how much fuel do we have in here? We have no liquid fuel to speak of because I can actually ditch this heat shield now. Except we have a little bit of liquid fuel up top, so... I should probably, what would be best practice would probably be to transfer that remaining liquid fuel down here. So while this is rotating around ever so slowly, let's go ahead and screw with this, oh, not that button. Definitely not that button. All right, let's go ahead and screw with the centrifugal forces a little more just by sending this out. Now we have an unbalanced spacecraft. Is already pretty unbalanced anyway. But since we have extra liquid fuel and we don't need all of it in the back anymore. I mean, I had all these aspirations for things I could have done to make things way more efficient here, but 
We still have one liquid fuel canister in here. I'm hoping that's enough to get to Gilly. I'm assuming it is. Although that may be a pretty big assumption because I've never actually flown to Gilly before. And if I can just get to Gilly and land, I should be okay. Hopefully I have enough fuel between that last little transfer to make an orbital transfer back to uh, Kerbin. That's the goal at least. We have a little bit of fuel up here as well, a little bit of mono repellent, a little bit of overheating in the core. I mean this, I'm actually a little more worried about this being able to get into a, the contracted polar orbit. I probably should have made this bigger, but I was getting worried about things being too big. But here's our maneuver with even the background yet again. Like I said, I really hope that 1080p recording holds out. I think it will. I expect it will. But there's Eve's poles. Eve, much like the moon, has some interesting polar features that maybe one day we can explore. Because one nice thing about Eve is that it, its atmosphere is really easy to fly in as long as you do something that doesn't require oxygen. So you don't want to bring jet engines in because they need oxygen to run. But any other kind of engine will do really well and get very good lift. Of course, if we're talking to the analog for Eve, which is Venus, then you run into the issue of hey, wait a minute, my ship uh, is melting under both the pressure, the temperature, and then on top of that, the chemical composition. So pretty much you have to have everything in a lead shell. It's kind of funny, but let's go ahead and just, guess we can time accelerate just to our maneuver node. Go ahead and get ourselves in a pretty stable orbit. I could have just warped to the node, but I kind of wanted to look at Eve like this instead. It's pretty. It's pretty deceiving. Now Eve does have like an, a rotational period of, uh, well, I'll check that in a second. I think it's two days, but I can't remember offhand. So that's going to be fairly important for uh, trying to land something on here. But we have a little bit of a burn. Let's go ahead and turn on the SAS. We will need it. And are we in orbit or suborbital? What? What is going on here? Oh, oh, that's a joke. Okay. I'll tell you what happened there. Because I have so many parts on the ship that are... No, we don't want that. I have so many parts on the ship that are just all over the place. What I've done is uh, made a ship that my prograde marker is pointing towards my retrograde because I'm not controlling from the front. The reason that happened was because... I want to control my ship from over the front over here, where really the front of my ship needs to go back over here. That was only because I was doing the uh, retrograde marker. You can see here, it's like, aha, you went completely retrograde. Isn't that funny? So now we went from, hey, look, we're going to be okay, to, hey, wait, we actually have to use a little more fuel to get out. So a little bit of a derp, but we just turn it around and we carry on. So there's even the distance. Really nice views once again, just all around. Like I said, I really hope the video quality of this holds out like I'm hoping it will, because I think I have a solution for getting 1080p videos in reasonable time. It has to do with a nice little free application called Handbrake that I'm having to use left and right for uh, just to use Adobe Premiere or any of the Adobe suite anyways, because it, does, because it doesn't like the variable frame rates that I'd be recording at. And it still wasn't playing nicely even when I was recording at constant frame rates. So what we get as a result is essentially, if I'm having to use Handbrake a lot and it compresses things quite a bit with very minimal quality loss, I've been fairly happy with it. I might as well record in 1080p and just use that. We'll see We'll see how it works. This, this video is kind of going to be a pilot experiment. So if it works, that's fantastic. If it doesn't work, well, it's kind of like the Kerbal Space Program mantra, isn't it? Regardless, we are almost there. We're going to be trying again for the maneuver. And I apologize for that body sound that you may or may not have caught. So, like I said, I'm always a little amused by people being so grossed out by people doing Let's Plays and stuff, making natural sounds with their bodies, like farts and whatever. But there we go. This is this is correct, right? Uh, yeah. That's We want to be going that way. 60... We don't need to burn a ton, we just need to burn enough. 70. We have plenty of fuel, so it's going to be fine. 80, 90. 90 will get us in orbit. 
So we've gone from suborbital to orbital. You'll see we got the contract complete. And I'm just going to put us up at about, let's do 110. 110 seems safer, although it's equally safe regardless. Yay! We are in orbit around EVE. We got a little bit more money. Not a lot. We got a little bit of reputation. I mean, we still have some funds. Once again, I'm getting little tiny contracts here and there that say things like, hey, why don't you dump this in another part of space? But we do have a few things to work on regardless. Let's see. What do I want to do first? This officially has no more use to me. I mean, it does have, okay, it does have mono, a little bit of modern propellant. And, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, I am, first thing I'm gonna to have to do is just cut off all these engines. I wish there was a good hotkey for that. Now, I have a little bit of monopropellant in this block that hasn't been used yet. A little bit of monopropellant here that hasn't really been used. One of these, one of these blocks has to be where I've been using most of my fuel from. Yeah, I don't know why I'm suddenly just activating my engines all the time, but let's go ahead and go out. You need monopropellant probably. Yes, you do. Oh my, you do. All right. Out. And that's going to fill up most of this tank. It's nice that I didn't get rid of that monopropellant, that's for sure. Of course, my ship is now in a very awkward rotation. But you know what? We're still going over EVE, so that is nice. All right. So what's the next part of our mission then? We're doing just kind of a live recording. I may jump cut here once or twice, but otherwise... I think the next step is I do want to send I do want to send the Gilly Hopper to Gilly. I want to see if that's going to work, and I want to send the landing station down. We may do the satellite thing last because I think that's the mission that uh, a few of these missions are probably a little more doomed to failure than others, but this one may be the worst. All right, so if we're going to be sending the Gilly Hopper on, what that means we need to do is we need to do a little bit of a crew switch. So let's start first off by uh, stopping the ship spin. We've had, we've had enough ship spin with this episode so far. Not this episode, but this series. Let's go ahead and decouple here. Well, let's, let's see for a second. Did I screw that? I don't think I screwed this up. I should be okay. Decouple here. And... There we go, good. So I was just hoping the Poodle engine better, not, better be the one that's getting rid of itself. And that's another reason I went to 110 here. We're now at 111, which is fine. Decoupling, we're going to be doing a lot of decoupling and stuff here, and I don't want things to go terribly, terribly wrong. Now, Avella is going to have to be one of the people that goes on the Gilly Hopper, so let's go ahead and EVA her onto it. We should already have one crew. Oh, review the stored data. Space while high above E. Well, there we go. Let's transmit. So Avella is going to be one of the people. You do not have to have a scientist to make uh, this work. You can have a pilot in there. It just needs to be manned or womaned, as it were. So we are going to put you on the ghillie hopper, and we need, which means we need to rotate crew to put somebody else in the science station. You're going to be there for a while. But the idea, at least in theory, let's turn on the light again because that's not the entrance. Oh, I am running into my uh, landing station. That's not good. That's why we look where we're flying. If you remember what happened on Duna, where I sent my very jolly EVA team into a EVA and Kerbal into the solar panels and destroyed them, that is a thing. So look, this is like the crazy spacewalk. Not even quite a spacewalk, as it were. But there's another thing flying on, and here is our entrance in just a moment. Please tell me I'm going on the correct side of the crew capsule. I am. On the back side of everything here. And can we go up? I think so. Yep, let's go on in. We're not super close, but we're close enough. Now the idea behind the Gilly Hopper is that we are going to be doing some refueling. But because we're gonna be refueling, my goal is gonna be to hit the biomes on Gilly and get as much science as we can. My other goal is that in case I'm short on fuel, that I can go to Gilly, get some fuel, and come back, and hopefully be able to do transfers. If it takes a bunch of transfers, then it takes a bunch of transfers. I don't have the biggest fuel tank on here. Only 720 liquid fuel and then oxidizer. 
like I said, I'm not entirely sure it's going to be enough to even make the trip. But it's going to be really interesting to see, can I even get encounters with this again? So, there we go. Let's go ahead and say, I think the first mission that's probably going to be most interesting to do is just to see, can I land this thing on the clouded hellscape that is Eve? I could turn off the mods and say, okay, where is their land? But if we look at the stats itself, its rotational period is three days. So we're not out far enough to where we're going to get a different rotation each time. But I believe there's a pretty good amount of land down here towards the bottom pole. We just don't want to land this in the water. And unfortunately, there's not going to be a great way for me to test that. But like I said, we do have a few rockets that will be enough to descend this into the atmosphere. And we want to kind of do it at a shallow angle. So I think we're going to go ahead and just separate stages. We're going to have one ship going towards Gilly, and we're going to have another ship going towards the surface. Don't know if we'll be able to squeeze both into one video, but hey, that's why we have multiple episodes for multiple cats. Probably not the best time to transfer to Gilly anyway, considering it's so far away. But Gilly, Gilly is uh, kind of far away. So we may want to wait for that to get a little closer. Our, our orbit also is not like ideal at all for getting to Gilly at least from its current position. So that is gonna be fun to play with. Regardless, let's go ahead and do some undocking maneuvers. That means that we need to put, who is who's currently manning what station? Probably not the best way for me to do this, all right. We have a Bella and a Necklace. They look like, that looks like that's the Gilly crew. We have Paddock and Dudfred, the engineer. Maybe I should take the engineer instead of the pilot, but we're going to keep the engineer here. Well, you know what? I should put Dead Fred in there, if only because... Well, I may need I may need the SAS for landing, even though Gilly practically has no gravity to speak of. So the one Coppola... Looks like Alvi is going to be... Is going to win our contest and get to go to the surface of Eve. That's some shitty contest. Okay, so Paddock or Dead Fred? One of you is going to need to go into the science bay. Let's put Necklace in there. I know I said Necklace can go with this because we may need the SAS, but something tells me because there's no atmosphere quite to speak of that we should be able to BS getting to Gilly without too much problem. So let's take Necklace here. And we're going to put you in the science bay. All right, so crew transfers ahoy. Not the easiest perspective. What? Not the easiest perspective for any of this for some reason. But we want to put you on the science bay that is connected to the uh, the Eve brain. So let's, we have the lights on. There we go. So crew transfers aside. Yeah, let's try landing something on Eve. I think that'll be the most fun way to end this because I've the only time I've ever landed something on Eve, it was to crash probes on the Eve. I've never, we're, we're getting into the things I have not done in Kerbal Space Program. One of them is landing on Eve. I haven't done a land in return either, so that's not happening on this mission, like I said. All right, so board it. And then who do we say? Deadfred, our one engineer. Let's EVA you. Deadfred is currently in the brain. And this is going to be a little awkward to get out. I could go up the ladder over this way. Should be able to. All right. Good enough for me. And let's go ahead and put you on the Gilly Hopper. Now I do have one heat shield. Okay, I'm not going the wrong way. I do have one heat shield. The center of mass is supposed to be tougher towards the front here. We'll see if that plays out. But the idea is that this heat shield for the landing station is going to work accordingly. But the hopper suddenly looks a lot smaller without that big foot on it. So this is going to be fun. I hope it's fun. I hope it's inter I hope it's interesting for you all. I know right now you've heard today's episode just been a lot of me talking, but that's live commentary for you. I've wanted to do some live commentary for Kerbal Space Program for a little while. I haven't quite had the chance. So let's see. What is our crew manifest one more time? We have we have one person in the mobile processing center. That's Necklace. We have Paddock in a lander can. We have uh, Abella. I wish I could label these lander cans accordingly. Abella and Dunfred are be going to Gilly. Pilotless, of course. And then uh, we have someone else in the Coppola. That should be Alvi. 
Let's make sure Alvy's where she should be, because I don't want to separate all these and then not have one of these man. So EVA. Yes, you win a contest. You get to go. You get to be the first woman to step on Eve. First Kerbal at all. So let's go ahead and just split these parts up. I mean we're already we're already at Eve. We've been flying for how long? 118 days. Let's get this let's get this mission on the road. So undock. And I guess the first thing we want to do is just okay, we don't want to worry about the space junk. We do have the ghillie hopper that is over here. We can go ahead and release the legs. We only have one engine to worry about. Let's make sure we're controlling from the correct area here. So control from here, there we go. And let's RCS slightly out of the way, like so. Like I said, we just don't want to run into the space junk that's over here. And then let's RCS way over here. Orbital maneuvers. Well, I could do something more fun and more interesting with this, but there we go. Nice, just views for everybody. And I guess I can just rotate a little bit as well. So far, things pretty nimble. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully it has enough Delta V to get to Gilly, but I guess we'll figure that out before long. All right, next part. Let's just go ahead and time accelerate just briefly because we don't have to worry so much about this. We just want to get things out of the way just a little bit. Good enough. All right. So let's make sure our ships are named correctly. This is the Gilly Hopper still. I'm glad that those names preserve themselves. Gilly Hopper is going this way and then we have undocking in this corner. Not control from here. We want to undock. Here we go. That felt a little violent for an undock, but we have Necklace and Paddock in this ship still. This is still the Eve brain. So the Dervish part is somewhere else entirely. See, this is controlled disassembly. We have Alvy Kerman, who is so excited. She doesn't, she doesn't know what fun she's about to have, or maybe she knows exactly what fun she's about to have. Regardless, the, the part that Alvy's going to have to be concerned with is that her ship does not technically have any RCS. Well, it may have, it has, a, it has a little bit of RCS. Okay, we do not want to redock, so let's go ahead and uh, get out of here just a little bit and fly this way. So what we really don't want is things running into each other. So once we separate all this out, we're going to be following Alvy Kerman into the drink. I don't know if that's the way to put it, but she is going to be going down there. And I hope it works out. There's no great way to dis to get rid of this docking port. And we did lose a little bit of a blade of shielding down here. Once again, that's not so much from the reentry as much as things overheating. But we do have plenty of power right now. We can go ahead and make sure that we don't lose power just by going ahead and extending these panels. I'd hate to lose power at this juncture. This has three solar panels, which is probably overkill because it is so good or just so efficient, but right now, or so efficient because we're closer to the sun. But let's just go ahead and say, let's let's try this burn here, just to see if we can get her on the ground. So all we need to do is to burn retrograde, as she's going ahead and flying out at a pretty good velocity. And if we make one retrograde burn, it should be far enough away the po that these two engines are not going to shove this anywhere else. So our goal is very simple. It is just to, uh, let's get you all a little more separated. Note all the little tiny ships we have here now. Alvi by herself, a level one pilot, orbiting Eve. Rest your soul, please. All right. Let's go ahead and stage once. There we go. How far do we need to burn just to get down here? Not very far, but we are going to be doing a uh, we are going to be doing a aero complete capture, which means we need to go ahead and make our periapsis not just suborbital but worse. I mean better, better, better. It's always better. All right, I think fifty-five or sixty thousand will definitely do it. 
I'm gonna go down to 55 just to make sure. Our biggest goal is to use the parachutes most of the way, and we just don't want things to explode too much, which means we don't want to dive into the atmosphere because it gets pretty terrible. But look, we're already we're already so far away from everyone else. So we can jettison these at any time, but I think I will go ahead and make a uh, cut just to get us a little bit closer. All right, so this one's run a little long, but this is Asher signing off just in case that's what needs to happen here, I guess. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.